Awesome. So, thanks for being here, Dr. Henningren. Our presentation is on chemical car control. It's by myself, Patrick Taylor, Mark Johnson, and Bush. Uh, Mark has been with the Chemi Car team for two years now. He's been a key contributor and uh, done some really innovative stuff, including making his own 3D printing his own gearbox and things like that. So he's got a lot of experience here. Um, so what we're doing in implementing a control on the Chemi Car is unique. No other school has ever done it before that we've seen or has been recorded. And you may wonder why this is a necessary feature, and we're going to show you how we're going to implement it and why it's necessary. Um, <coughs> So with that, um, to give you, okay, perfect. So some background, two years ago, you, you won the National Chemi Car Competition. Anything they can do, we can do better. <laughs> so that's kind of some motivation for us uh, to really get this Chemi Car going. Last year's the BYU's entry only moved 70.7 meters out of 30 because the gearbox, they had problems with the gearbox and the motor. Um, this year we have a new Chemi Car um, and the skills to control it. Um, the constraints of the Kimi car are we have a stopping mechanism that's going to be a chemical timer. Uh, it has to travel 15, between 15 and 30 meters, so they'll announce that the day of and carry a load of 0 to 500 milliliters of water, which they will also announce the day of. Yeah, great. So um, the control objective of this project, um, we wanted to be able to maintain a steady, out, um, steady speed output. Um, with a varying uh, driving forward force um, input. And uh, the key component of the controller is that it needed to be able to function well um, no matter what the load on the car is uh, because that is one of the constraints of the competition that there could be a, a large load on the car, um, large compared to the size of the car. Um, so we wanted to be able to model that well. Uh, so we've listed some assumptions here. Um, most of them relate to the resistive force on the car. So we assumed that the only resistive force was a drag, um, air drag force. Um, and also um, another key assumption that we had to make was that um, it would be driving on a flat surface so there's no gravity effects in, in with that. Um, so here's um, a slide that shows the dynamic response of our system. So first of all we have the um, the um, momentum balance equation. Oh, are we? Yeah, is there? There we go. Yeah, so this is our momentum balance equation. So uh, this is the momentum of the car, it changes with time. This is the forward driving force, and this is the um, air drag resistive force, which acts um, opposite to the driving force forward. Um, so we took this equation and we linearized it and transformed it into the Laplace domain. You can see here so that we could have a transfer function. And um, this is a block diagram of our system. So we have the forward force input here. Um, and then this transfer function relates that force input to the output speed of the car. Uh, so we did a couple of step tests. Uh, you can see that in this graph right here um, with different um, masses of the car. It's a little bit hard to see there, um, but as you uh, change the mass of the car from 5 to um, 5.5 kilograms, um, the um, response is slower, so it takes a longer time to reach the steady state. And you can see that um, here in this equation, um, the mass is the time constant, so as you increase the mass, you're increasing the time that it takes. Yeah, my so the controller to do this is pretty simple. We did a, a, a root locus plot to figure out which uh, gains would be stable. And we were trying to avoid oscillations pretty heavily because that could tax the power source unnecessarily, maybe damage something. And we also, it, it's important to have a rise time that's fast, but also since we have the integral term, the average is going to work out. Um, the average velocity is going to work out, so we're covering the right amount of distance in the prescribed amount of time. So that there's the diagram of our control loop with the time delay. We noticed that there was a time delay happening when the Arduino was writing the speed. Um, can you advance it for me? In conclusion, what we found is that uh, we were able to con successfully control the speed of the car, which is awesome. It's a great step forward, and it frees us up to be able to optimize the speed of the car. And I ran an optimization simulation. I guess I don't know if it is a simulation, but an optimization function in Excel 
to figure out what the best velocities would be through the through the, the duration of the race. And the black and gray lines are the result of that, whereas the red ones are the normal. Um, the, what everyone else has been doing ever since the Kemi car competition was started. And it really is awesome. We've been able to reduce error uh, fundamentally by two-thirds, more than two-thirds. And uh, the next step is just to adapt it to the car and make it so that it has the actual controls.